Hey guys, Aiden from Reach Out Reptiles here. We're back with Brian Cusco. Today we talk about Brian's favorite breeding projects, his passion for traveling, and towards the end of the video, he gets pretty deep with me. I'm a little bit nervous about sharing this with you guys, but I believe it's time. If you wanna see what I'm talking about, make sure you watch to the end. What is your favorite breeding project? Yeah, I was just thinking about this in the shower the other day for whatever reason. <laughs> thinking about the clown pie project and, and how much I really do love it. It was the first project that I dove in head first. I, I saw it. Mm -hmm. I really, I loved it. And I, I jumped, I jumped in head first. I was like, well, I need to get just a, a clown pie and go from there. I didn't know what they cost at the time before I got it. And then I yeah. thought, I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, well, all right, let's go broke. <laughs> and I still, to this day, that was the project that first got me really excited about doing breeding with ball pythons it was clown pie mm -hmm. and it still is this day literally yet it was yesterday in the shower when i was taking a shower i was like yeah clown pied <laughs> <laughs> i love yeah. that project man. my my dream ball python is a banana clown pied that was the animal that i'm still working on that, project. <laughs> that literally that exact project when i when i first um and i now that now it's grown kind of a bit more like mm -hmm. different things i want to plug into enhance the project in a different way and then I, now that i've seen a little more you know at that point nobody had produced a banana clown pie of course now somebody some people have but that was the the exact animal banana clown pied yeah that's my dream bulb i thought i need well, one <laughs> well i'm gonna i'm next season mm -hmm. i very well may have like literally this next season i should have i should be producing banana clown pies yeah i want one <laughs> i want one <laughs> All right, I'll put you in there on the list then. Yeah, definitely do that. Yes, I want one. They're going to be very, very expensive, but I want yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you have a, have a favorite place to travel to? Amsterdam is still, I've been there multiple times now. Mm -hmm. Probably my favorite city in the world. Something about the culture of that city, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's riding bikes. It's very pedestrian based. In fact, bikes rule the road in, in, that, in the Netherlands. Oh, that's really it, cool. If you ran into a car on your bike, like you were at fault, nope, it's the car's fault. They were in the way. Like, <laughs> that's how the bike life is. And you just ride everywhere on bikes. You got water running throughout the city, all these canals. You can go on a boat and go throughout the city. And, mm -hmm. and just something. About, and, and the last time I was there also, this probably helps confirm my bias, is, is uh, it, was, it had been winter for Amsterdam, you know, not, not by date, but by, by season. Mm -hmm. It was winter and we, we got there and the next day was the first day of spring. And you just watched everybody come out of that. Like they, they warmed up. We had gone with like warm clothes. I literally had to go buy some tank tops at some <laughs> shop. With it. Like, it was such a hard time to find a tank top in Amsterdam at that time. But I found a couple because it, it was like that. It went from winter to spring, the, the, like the day we got there. <laughs> we just watched everybody emerge out of their cocoons and everybody's out in the parks. <laughs> Ireland, favorite country because of mm -hmm. the warmth of the people there. But if we're talking about reptiles, I'm still finding that. Australia was incredible. Oh, Australia. that's where I want to go. I want to yeah. go to Australia so bad. It's such a, it's like a, it's really like a dream of mine. I really, really, really want to go to Australia. I well, you'll go, wait. man. That's the thing. I know you can I will do. eventually. You will. You will. You just set your sights on, that's a, one thing with goals, like have a few, but, and, and work towards all of them independently, mm -hmm. maybe because they don't all work out at the same time. But that place well, I'm obviously the animal, the reptiles there are incredible and, mm -hmm. and finding them out there in the wild is incredible. Yeah, I cannot wait. I cannot yeah. wait to go. What is your most meaningful or favorite reptile experience? Oh, well, it had to be the one that got me into keeping reptiles in the first place, which I've told this story a bunch of times, but yeah, it was in my backyard in Hayward, California when I was four years old mm -hmm. and this California king snake came crawling through the grass. I didn't know it was a California king snake that necessarily, but my dad did. And we, we just spotted it, you know, black, you know, well, good size, black and white, just cruising through the backyard grass and uh, finding it, getting it. And like, ooh, <laughs> my dad confirmed it was king snake that we could, you know, it was non-venomous. We could interact with it. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be the neighbor's escaped pet king snake. And he was like, he was a biker dude. And his name was literally, can't make this up, but it sounds like I am. His name was Snake. <laughs> It was his moniker, like his biker handle, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a room that looked like this. His living room looked like this with, with a bunch of animals. And that was 
the most meaningful because it got it bridged that gap because I was already, I was already into dinosaurs I liked animals like that um, but that made that jump at a very early age just like yeah. boom reptile I love I love reptiles and then my dad and my parents being very cool and supportive allowed us to have a pet reptile in the house like that month that's so cool so, yeah what was, was your first what was your first pet reptile it was a uh, not the best one to get I would say the, <laughs> the rough green snake. Hmm. That's yeah, an interesting great. choice. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, it was what they had available at the East Bay Vivarium for not, not too expensive. I found out later down the road why that was the case. And so it's not necessarily the best first pet reptile to get or, or pet reptile to get, period, because I think they're tough to come by um, captive bred, but they're mm-hmm. readily available in the wild, but they don't do so well in captivity necessarily. But really cool little snakes, though. But that was, that was the first. That's cool. Rough green snake. They eat crickets or, you know, in, they're insectivores. Hmm. What is your favorite reptile? The snake that I find while herping, that's my favorite reptile of the day. <laughs> it is. I always put a gold star on any day when, I'm, mm-hmm. when we're out herping and we find the snake, we get a little gold star right there in that hour. <laughs> gold star, found the snake. That's, that's, that's so always funny. it. Like when we're out in Australia, we found all kinds of cool different stuff. But yeah, you know, even when, even when we found like the thorny devil, I was like, yes, that's so cool. Like it was so, so incredible, but it wasn't a snake. <laughs> So you like snakes the best. I'm a snake guy through and through, man. Snakes. Yeah. I can't choose. <laughs> I can't choose because it depends on what lizard and what snake it is. I would say blue tongues are better than retics, but retics are better than leopard geckos. You know? Blue tongues better than retics. I'm sorry. Man. I really love I... blue tongues. <laughs> yeah, sure. They're cool. I, I love I've them so much. Them. Yeah, that was the first, they were my, that was my first reptile. So I'm kind of, since it was my first, I'm kind of like, yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, a little bit, (laughs) just a little bit. (laughs) Do you have any questions for me? Do you, do you experience any difficulties with the the trans thing, especially in, there's closed minded people out here in the Mm -hmm. reptile hobby. There's, there's, we have our share, just like any other group of people. Yeah. Do you have any struggles with that at all? Have you? I haven't, but I think it's because I really haven't put out there too much that I'm trans. I'm sure people know and people realize and people have figured it out, but I haven't publicly said, yeah, I'm trans, you know? So no one has really came to me and talked to me about it or said anything about it really. So I haven't struggled with anything yet. I don't, I haven't dealt with it at all. So it's an experience Mm -hmm. for me that I, I've, I had one other, one other friend I knew from high school that, um, that went through it and but he had a he had a pretty you know good good experience you know not too much struggle I don't think compared to some of the folks out there that, that do so I was just curious like what how it is for you it's part of who I am so did you have any, I, any struggles with with family besides like just reptiles but like family family or? I came out at the beginning of high school so I've been out for like four over four years now um at first it was a struggle for pretty much everyone in my family to call me Aiden and go by the right pronouns and stuff. Um, but now everyone, like, if they don't call me Aiden, I ignore them. <laughs> so everyone, I got everyone on track and everyone's calling me Aiden, calling me he at home and pretty support. Everyone's supportive. So that's awesome. Well, I, I, uh, I commend you because I, not knowing personally that kind of thing I, I do know that there obviously are a lot of struggles that w- would come you know like just being accepted by your family for one like to, mm-hmm. to have that idea that maybe you won't be but to still just be real to who you are and I'm very happy with myself now too like I notice such a difference in my personality and everything like so much more confident like I wouldn't be doing this video right now like I wouldn't be doing any videos at all if I like still went by my dead name and still went by the female pronouns so coming out as trans opened me up a lot so that's that's good you know you got to find what it is that makes you happy and and like Mm -hmm. nobody else can tell you what that is I'm glad you're finding that for yourself well thank you so much for doing this interview with me yeah, it's man, really fun. You definitely inspired me to uh, um, start my YouTube channel now. So, well, have a nice day. You too, Aiden. Thanks for having me on. Yes, man. thank you. I'm a friend. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Yeah. Bye. Bye. 
Brian is a really great guy and he's always here at Reach Out Reptile supporting the team. We have a whole bunch of videos with Brian. We collab with him quite often. So if you would like to see some more videos of Brian Cusco at Reach Out Reptiles, check out this video down here.